Hello and welcome to the Collecting Addicts podcast. I'm told it's episode 27. I always forget. Chris Cooper just reminded me it is 20, so it's 27 weeks of hour long shite that you've all had to listen to. Um, and I've, I've actually had a member of the audience suggested a name for this particular event, our first as live recording. Because of um, the number of men here, the lovely lady at the front here has decided to call it the Collecting Sausage <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> Uh, and I can't think of a more apt description. <laughs> or you could call it a hundred sad bastards in a field. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for showing that you want to support this. Come and have a laugh with us uh, and, and listen to some more drivel that we might talk to you. So we're going to move straight on to number one on the agenda, which is why do we love convertibles? I think this is, is asked specifically because we all know that this country buys more convertible cars than anywhere else in Europe. And yet we suffer a climate that well, it's being demonstrated it's to us right bit. now. Uh, why, why do we love the things? I'm going to ask uh, Chris Cooper this first. Well, I was thinking about that a lot, obviously, this afternoon, as we were all driving here through the pouring rain and the 100 years of pestilence and so forth. Um, and it, it took me back to, and you're going to find this really hard to believe. A few years ago, I was on a speed awareness course. Ah. And I, I, I shocking to imagine that I might need that. And I thought, well, I, I know about speed. I don't need to be made to worry about it. I think speed is great. Great speed is good. Speed works. So when I said that to them, I got a reaction that didn't seem to be the one they're looking for. So I thought, I better take the course seriously. So there's a bit in, none of you will have been on one of these courses, I'm sure. There's a bit in one of those courses where they ask you to explain why you've been speeding. And people came up with lots of very interesting answers. <coughs> I was late for a meeting. I, there was something wrong with my car. I had to get go for piss um and i just said because it's fun <laughs> it makes me feel good and they said to me that's exactly the answer we were looking for and they meant honesty and for convertibles they make me feel good they're just fun there is no event there's no occasion where a convertible doesn't make you smile it makes the mundane feel exotic you feel like a film star it doesn't matter. I'm sorry, I'll stop you there. You feel like a film star. <laughs> when you're above five foot ten, Chris, those those are options for us. Oh, that's a, those low, are that's a low for blow. That is. So get that uh, in first. Get that in first. So no, have you I got special mirrors at your house or what? I d not now. <laughs> But yeah, we do. They're all mostly on the floor. <laughs> you're you're, you're uh, easier behind no, I, a, uh, a, a No, I think they, an make, iPad. You they make you feel good. Stop, I think he's just, in the middle of a monologue about why convertibles fun. aren't shit. Carry they're on. Just, well, they are shit. Some of them can be shit. Some of them can look really horrible. But I just think they make you feel good. The world's a better place. Sort of the smell, the sound. Mm, uh, mm. It's just, it's just oh. a happy place. He's gone into poetry mode. <laughs> Neil Clifford, rescue us. I think God created this country's weather, <laughs> yeah. obviously, for, for convertibles, right? Because it's not too hot and it's not too cold. Yeah, It's the perfect climate for convertibles. You don't want to live in LA or southern Italy or even Spain or Greece with a convertible because it's too fucking hot. Isn't it? <laughs> Basically, yeah. you know, 48 degrees yeah. in Rome. On, also, on the this is an issue, isn't it? In yes, the I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm finding this not a problem. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is an issue. So I think it's we've got the perfect climate. I think that we all true. love looking at the sky. I love, I'm clearly not when I'm driving. I've got to say, mate. We have so seen I photographs think, and you are actually are looking at the sky. Right? Yes. You do send us those. I think yeah. the, um, they amplify sound. Yes. You can yeah. just hear the car better, can't you? Yeah. And I think it's joyous with music on and dusk. And I think it's a getting older thing. Because when I was like 20 in my Renault 5 Turbo, Raider Edition. I didn't have the Raider. Oh, it's I'm the Raider killed, Edition. Mate. I'm killed. killed. You would yeah. never even have thought about buying a company car, uh, buying a convertible car. If, you, if you're young, I don't think. You know, I say to my son, my son is here on the second row there, and say, wouldn't it be great if you could you know, wash your first car? Do you want it to be a convertible? I was like, fuck off. I don't want a convertible. <laughs> <laughs> I want a convertible for. So I think it's an age thing. Yeah. And I think our climate is perfect. You can hear the car better. You can smell the countryside. And it's just a bit more joy, I think. Yeah, it's it? joy. It's, an old, well, it's all an very cozy thing. and lovely. How was your experience this yesterday in a convertible? Yesterday, I spent oh. nine hours driving from Devon to my house in Buckinghamshire in a convertible because it was like not as bad as this and the, the car I was driving doesn't have a roof 
and I was sort of... It's not really convertible then, is but it? You, you know, you, <laughs> it's just convert. It's converted. <laughs> yeah, okay. But you look on the weather thing, and Friday's terrible, but actually Thursday's okay. You know, it's yeah. cloudy. There was none of that rain stuff in the, in the BBC thing. But it just pissed down. Why is it always home. the BBC that gets the blame for this well, stuff? Well, you know... It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's normally the BBC. Yeah, part, it is. Isn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah. So I, I spent literally four hours hiding under trees in a car without a roof. That's but I'd such still an got adventure. Home. Didn't I get home you with a smile on my face? Yes, an adventure. Oh. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, what do you think? Convertible. Me. Yeah, you. Yeah. You're well, part I, of this podcast. Well, I don't yeah. have a, well, I do have a convertible at the moment. It's just arrived, but I don't have a V5, so I can't use it. Uh, and this weather's not very conducive to using it either. But I think it's freedom. It's convertible. And it, a coupe on the road does not provide the same drama as roof down. Ideally manual. It needs to be a bit of effort. I'm not quite sure with just the button. But Well, you like having it actually to do the roof? Yes, I do. I like yeah. to get out of the car. If you're my height, you can't reach the bloody roof. Yeah. Right. Soaking notes. I, th- here, I, I think I agree. The door. I think I agree. With, with with the age thing, I, I age. have to admit that as a, a sort of young hormonal road tester, for me the idea of taking the roof off went against everything that I thought, key thing I thought I stood for because I wanted to present myself as the quasi racing driver. I used to talk about torsional rigidity and shit that meant nothing to anyone else in my life, but actually, and I'd say you know if someone cut the roof of a car, I'd sort of look at it like it was like dog poo. I'd go, why have you done? You've wrecked a perfectly good car. And if you drove the convertible Ferrari of the coupe, as you wrote the story, you're like, I know. You slag everyone, it off a bit. You have to. Yeah, yeah it's, it lacks some rigidity. You know, you'd imagine that you <laughs> were like, right, the car back in the 80s. Who well, cares? actually, well, actually, many of them were shit. What I should have understood was, it didn't matter. Because yeah. I believe that as the shitness increases in a convertible, so does the joy. Yeah. So the joy offsets the added shitness <laughs> of the convertible, right? That's that's very logical. Graph. That's quite there's technical graph. That is, but 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 you understand that's how it works, and I think it is an God age thing. Like Jesus Christ is coming down now. <laughs> that really is. <laughs> like that days of... Johnny on the mixing deck is fighting there. He really is. <laughs> so um, I, I get it, and I, latterly, shamefully, I've really got into convertibles. I've you got, have actually, haven't you? I've yeah. got a couple of cars that really are. Quite dreadful, you know. Sorry, God. <laughs> yeah, so the deal is going well. Oh, he didn't like that, did he? Um, so I've, I've got I've got an R one two nine five hundred SL, which Lovely. which by any modern standards, it, it goes down the road like a blancmange. It's terrible, and yet at times you have to chase the steering wheel around the cabin. It's like where's that gone? It, it just shakes and wobbles. But every journey is more fun exactly. and more of an event because the roof comes off. But now I look back and just I feel ashamed that I took the piss out of all these convertibles because they really were they were lovely cars. I never got it. No, until I didn't I got, at all. Until I got I old. Borrowed what, one having a convertible. Yeah, I wasn't into it at all. I borrowed one of yours about fourteen, fifteen years ago. It was an R two thirty two ten. Yeah, no, that was S- a, that was SL an SL sixty three. SL sixty three. That's a convertible. That was my first ever convertible. Uh, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah. And I was amazed you had it, but it was just fantastic. Good car. Uh, it was really nice. It was faster than the SLR on that big down. But oh yeah, I shouldn't tell you that, but should I? No. Yeah, it was but, faster uh, than the SLR. Yeah. But I also I had a, an aversion because I saw, I had I saw I had an incident that altered me as a child. Um, no, I wasn't. Right, teena- yeah. I was a teenager in uh, in Bristol, and there was a bit of a. If anyone knows Bristol, there was a bit of an altercation in uh, in Broadmead. As you're coming off the M32 before you get to the big roundabout, there's a McDonald's there, right? And yeah. there was a there was some there was some kids being quite rowdy, and there was a lad in a a new E36 M3 convertible. So it must have been mid nine early mid 90s, and he was very proud of his car. But he had that light. Remember the Silverstone leather, that sort of light grey yeah, leather, uh, that basically if you, if you got a fly sit on it, it would just wreck the colour of it. Anyhow, he was being a bit big bollocks and he had his radio turned up playing his tunes and um, and someone lobbed a, a Big Mac in it. <laughs> <laughs> they just went bang. They must have been rich and rich to do that. It caused mayhem inside his car and I thought to myself, <laughs> that wouldn't happen if you had a roof, mate. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's what, that's what caused me to be so worried about these things, but they are they are joyous. And actually, McLaren, when they started making those carbon tubbed sports yeah, cars, no with the roof that came off, it made no difference because it was stiff as you like. So yeah, I think I got convertibles completely wrong. So I think in room 101, they're not going in. They're definitely not going in. No, not going in. Good. Right, here we yeah. go, here's a can of worms for you. BMW still makes the best cars. Discuss, Edward Lovett. 
Did you have a rental car? Was that BMW the other day? I did. Yeah. But that's why I'm talking about I know, that, I know you did. But I, I, so <laughs> it, it, it makes me go... <laughs> so I've, I've grown up uh, with BMW uh, in the family. And... And I, I, I commented last week about uh, interior quality and E36. E4, uh, E36 was particularly good. Um, and someone put in the comments, say, if, they wanna, if he wants to come and have a go in my 250,000 mile uh, E36, it's <laughs> yeah, not yeah. quite the same. Yeah. But uh, actually, I went to uh, Amsterdam Schiphol Airport and rented a, a 7 Series. Um, it was a, I, was, I booked like a Yaris or something like that, but... They offered me for a hundred pounds a day more to upgrade into a seven forty D. That's a nice car. It was, and I, so nice I, I drove to see some cars up in northern Germany, and then I drove to to Stuttgart the day after. That car in Germany on the autobahns. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking brilliant. Also had a hundred liter tank, didn't it? Had it a did. massive fuel tank, so you'd, you'd fill it up once a month. Yeah, just once. <laughs> yeah, that's all it needs. Yeah, yeah, brilliant car. I love the quality, and. You can talk about the dynamics, Christopher, but it's just a better car than a Mercedes. I'm going to put this to the audience later on, but I think that I still think they make some great cars. They, they, they've all, there's always been a sense that their engineers really like driving, um, and I and I whenever I interviewed them or worked with them, they were passionate. They loved it. They cared more about the dynamics. And now Chris Cooper is going to tell us about his 640i convertible that he used to drive. <laughs> I didn't have a 640i. What was it? 645i? 645i. And a 650. Um, I really, it's, it's, it's a double whammy. It's convertible and it's a BMW. It was, I'm a bit torn on this BMW thing because that was about 10 years ago when they felt like there was nothing they could do wrong. And then the one series and the front wheel drive appeared and you thought, really? Really? But just recently, particularly with the M cars, I just think. They do get it right. And we talked a while ago about the Nürburgring 24 hours. I've talked to some of you about that a little bit earlier, which is a big part of our lives and, and racing there. Um, BMW is just as important a part of that place and its reputation as Porsche is. Yeah. In fact, they've probably got as many wins in the N24 as Porsche have. So, um, and the look, the gopping grill, it doesn't, great so much but they do work they work in a way that feels like there are still people there that give a toss yeah so i think do they make the best cars it's really hard to say i mean how do you measure that but um if one turned up tonight on the way home i was just thinking actually i can be rude about it we're looking at the car there are there are some bmws and a little straw poll of um watching on at home on youtube you can't see this but there are plenty of cars here and there are some bmws and well done to you who brought one other makes are available um, and they're just as lovely. Uh, but I, th I feel more positive about them now than I did after the 1M. You had a 1M, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, which I didn't get at the time. And now I think, oh, gosh, that's mega. The M2 looks a bit shite, really. Did you see those who are at Goodwood what? today, the BMW stand with the little, the light blue one? It looked like bird shit on the roof, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it really did. That's unfair. Um, I'm driving one at the moment. I love it. I know you do. It's I know a you do. fantastic it just looks car. Better. I'm not sure we should be judging aesthetics. Look, apart from Neil, it looks well, magnificent. Yeah, and who did? <laughs> did we not get the memo? No, because we we don't have threads he did that. Say we he don't was have threads that sharp. I'm I, a I wore a suit like that on that catering film. <laughs> if you're not if you're if you're not watching Somebody this on YouTube, Neil it. looks fantastic. He looks like it the man from Del Monte met a shake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and. Um, but no, that the see, I think the M2 is great. I also like the way it looks. It, it will it will grow on people over time. It's, yeah. it's their Il Monstro, and it's so wide at the back. It's like it's almost like a three wheeler. It's like a dart shape, and Just it drives. Just don't put the rear spoiler on in that triangular no, exhaust. That shot. I don't know what they're playing yeah. out there, but also the quad exhaust. What's that all about? I don't really get that. But I, this came about because Neil, and this is why I think this is my litmus test for whether whether a car maker is universally still great. It's not what we choose to buy. It's when you're given a car to drive or you borrow a mate's car and you get in, you wouldn't have driven it otherwise. And you go, actually, this good. is just fantastic. And I'll, at this point, without ruining his story, I'm going to pass more. over to Mr. Neil Clifford of The Suit. I've come as Simon Kidson. You have me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank God yeah. you haven't. <laughs> yeah. um, no, we, we family holiday about a month ago to Sicily. And I'd booked a sort of boring, middle of the road, whatever, not too expensive, not too cheap, four of us. And the, the guy that I know, Giuseppe at um, Sixth in Palermo, 
messaged me saying, actually, I've, I've got an upgrade. We've got a BMW new touring. If you want it, it's like 20 euros more or something a day. And I'm like, yeah, definitely. And he picks me up at the Generator. airport. And I'm like, I've got to stop you. That's a big, <laughs> okay. I it's think you're the generator. He's trying to fill up the Jenny with diesel as he's dying. The generator. <laughs> Look at him, he's there. Go on, get some gas in her, son. Get some gas in her. She's going, she's dying. She's dying. <laughs> Shall I finish this one quick? Yeah. Go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. Uh, the, funnel, the funnel's out. Well, the funnel's out. <laughs> he's got another can out. Neil, carry on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sicily. Sicily, so Tori, Giuseppe. I jump in this car. I haven't, I haven't owned a BMW for years. Um, I'm always slightly jealous of my friend Luke here with his 1M, who's had oh, it for eight, eight years. Nice car. Eight, eight years, nine years. And I had one and I sold it and I regret it. And But anyway, you jump in this thing and you recognize the font. That's how fucking good oh. it is, right? <laughs> font. The fonts That's, are even yeah. better than Audi or Beer. They haven't the pissed around. Aren't they? they haven't pissed around with yeah, the fonts. The font they haven't done it's that really silly font. italics thing like Mercedes. It's all exactly from the 90s, the same font. Yeah. And the dials. And this was a 520. You know, it's probably a diesel four pot. Still probably 75 grand with the extras though, isn't it? It's fast, it feels light. That's what's amazing about it. It doesn't feel a heavy thing. You get in a Mercedes or frankly an Audi's even worse. Yeah. It feels heavy, isn't it? It feels like someone's put 600 weight of wood in the boot, <laughs> particularly an Audi. And then this engine is quiet. You don't know it's a diesel. And then the quality of the materials. But the, the one thing I think is the damping. Right, I'm not. A, you know, I'd never I'm, thought I'm we'd get say, Neil Clifford talking about damping, the subtleties of damping. damping. I'm loving the damping it. and the steering on the glove box lid, or actually the car. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> no, to drive this thing, you enjoy yeah. what, what, what used to be what ultimate driving machine. Freude, just, Freude am Fahrer, isn't it yeah. in German? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's just a pleasure. The only thing I don't like is, and, and none of us, I'm sure, like it, is that um, lane assist shit. Oh, oh, you can turn it off. That is horrible, isn't it? But yeah. it comes back on every time. Oh, it's true. And then you've yeah, got to find it. That's an EU law now, isn't it? On that M2 uh, I've got, you, you, every yeah. time you start the car, you have to turn you've both off. It. You've and that's, you know, it. the yeah. steering starts wobbling when you're, you know, drifting along and your wife's going, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> 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 because it, it uh, feels dangerous, doesn't it? It feels at dangerous. At home with the Cliffords. <laughs> But I thought, the car, literally, I came back and I said, oh, we should buy one, you know, get rid of the Range Rover. It's too big, too horrible. Yeah. It's true. Just get a touring five series. Have you? It's fantastic. Have you? No. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, I tell, if you want the, the truth of that, I had that new bloody B5 GT on order. Why did you not yeah, they take offered that? It to me. Right. Okay. Yeah, you've got it now. Well, you? not quite. We're just keeping and it real. We're keeping it real for everyone here as we yeah, pass yeah, exactly. around the 160 grand now. No, penis. but I, 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 bottled, I bottled it because I'm like 150 yeah. grand for a five series. Yeah, but it's probably the it's probably the one of the best cars you could buy for any no, money. No, I bottled it. They've still yeah. got my 15 grand deposit it's sitting there. Actually, have they? Yeah, I've got to get that back. I could get that. <laughs> and then, so then, whatever his name is at um, High Wycombe BMW, Alpina sitting there. I messaged him and said, get me a, a, you know, oh, they're very difficult to get hold of. What, a 520 d I'm like, come on, mate. Not when you got but a 520 Then, then they're all sell. silver with black, aren't they? They're all yeah, shit spec. And you want to order what the color right would, one. What colour would you have in there? Navy then? with tan. Navy oh, with yeah. caramel. Clear glass. Clear glass. Clear glass, obviously. Yeah. So now I've got into a position where I can't really order a new one. He's trying to sell me the 540X, blah, blah, blah. And then that's like 90 grand. And, I'm like, I don't want that. and then you're back where you started. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I haven't get, I haven't get, I'm okay. not getting one. We feel your pain. I know. The <laughs> dilemma. First world problems on the collecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I, I, I think, uh, I just, I've always been in love with BMW. I think, uh, Part of that refers back to the cars that our parents drove. It was always, I can remember when I could first afford my own car uh, and it was, it was a reasonable car. My, my father had a BMW and I wasn't, I wasn't allowed one because my dad's car is unobtainium, isn't it? You shouldn't have the same car as your dad. Um, and then when I first, the first time I actually really drove a BMW was when I was at Autocar Magazine. I got there, first day of work, 
and they they'd all been I'd I'd read Autocar all my life. I, was, I knew I my opinions were basically the opinions of other people that I'd read, and yeah. that happens, doesn't it? When you're younger, you read these car magazines and you sort of parrot their opinions because you've not driven all the cars. And at that point, the new car was the E39 5 Series, the oh. 528i, which is probably the, the best car. single the car. motor car I've ever tested the car. Uh, in my time being a road tester. It was a great car. But they they were always sniffy about the automatic. The manual was the one to have. The automatic was supposed to be a bit a bit well, shitty. I had the automatic. It was nice. Well, th th that's why. And um, <laughs> and, and so I, I got in this thing. And I had to drive it to Chobham Test Track, first day at work. And I was thinking to myself, wow, this is the one to have. It's probably one of the best cars I've ever driven. It was just mind-bendingly good everything it did was brilliant and i and i think when you start at work those formative first few weeks you those are opinions that you don't you don't really set them aside they stay with you because they're your reference points particularly for testing cars and i i remember thinking when i you know even as recently as was that still on even as recently as um a couple of years ago i'd get in a new car i think to myself a new saloon car and think that e39 that i drove yeah. in 1998 is better than this car. I still think that if you took a manual 530i, the facelift 5 series, yeah. with the right equipment, so the sports suspension, but not too big a wheel, the right interior, the sports seats, that is better than any modern sports saloon that you could buy now. Uh, that That's remarkable. How many other things can you say that about? If I gave you a, a phone from 20 years ago, it's just <laughs> yeah. everything else. Does that mean the car industry hasn't moved on? I don't know. That's another question to ask from the podcast. But, yeah. but I, do, I do think that BMW has always had a sense from me that as the others caught up, and they did catch up, didn't they? Yeah. That there were people at BMW that just gave a bit more of a shit about the driving yeah. side of it. Yeah. And it's one we all... The font thing is really... It's a big thing, the font. You, you, you get in there and you sit down and you see the font and you think, this is probably going to be okay. Yeah. It's just that reassuring... That E39, that was such a mega, mega car. The E39 M5, I always remember, I remember two things about that car. I remember driving through the night in an XJR with Steve Sutcliffe to go down to drive this car. They were launching it down on the Austrian border. And it was pissing the rain. And I was new to the job then. And Steve's driving skills were just otherworldly to me. So he's sort of lightly drifting this Jag down at 100, 120 miles an hour. And I'm thinking, this is the, I have got the best job in the world, despite the fact they were paying me 12 grand. And um, and I, I we got I remember two things about that trip. One was the E thirty nine M five was the biggest leap in a car I'd ever come across. Yeah. I hadn't driven a car that could do that. This thing was quicker than a nine eleven, looked amazing, sounded amazing, and I always remember stopping to take a photograph in a village called Rimsting. Rimsting. <laughs> there was a village. You just made that up. No, nope, there was a village. Can somebody please I've Google got, Rimsting. I've got a photograph of me outside of. A I don't want to hear about you and your Rimsting. Called called Rimsting. But no, what? So BMW, yeah, I, I think generally speaking, and they're on form at the moment, the current M cars, that M5 CS I've got is, that's the best car I've ever driven all round. That'll take your B5, yeah. well, your B5 GT. It would take that it would. and it would yeah, literally exactly. wee on its shoes. It's yeah. better than it. And why, would you, and why would you buy just... the B5 when you can have that? Yeah, yeah. well, it's an estate car, isn't it? Think about the Alpine, the estate car. Yeah. No, I think, um, okay. M5 estate is The coming. user interface as well, though. That the loser interface. The, the user, user interface. interface. As soon as you jump in, it's easy, right? You get in a Mercedes. What is that mouse? That thing? Oh, yeah. You know what? <laughs> why is that thing? It's a mouse you get in a that Mercedes. doesn't do mouse things. Yeah. It's all great. That mouse. Yeah. You know, maybe they don't have it in the what, new. What the trackpad and... thing? Yes. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Neil has spoken. No one knows how to <laughs> use that <laughs> thing. If anyone in here so knows how to use that track, that, that, that thing. That mouse thing. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you know, I like a Mercedes Benz as well. Next week, we could do why Mercedes Benz is the best car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Neil. Um, right, now we're moving on to the thorny issue of. <laughs> I'll say it with a straight face. What car has the best pedals? How do these, we are the, end these, up here? these are the things that you can't discuss in front of your friends. Anyone? No, that's and that's why you need. The that's reason why we, we start this. a podcast yeah, yeah. because it's, there's things we want to talk about that we can't talk about in society. Otherwise, you end up, you know, being looked at by Operation U Tree. So I, I think <laughs> we um, we need to start pedals. Edward Lovett, do you have any strong feelings on pedals or not? They just need to fit my feet, and I need to be able to heel and toe in them. And you, it can't have seen, too I've much. I've never seen you heel and toe, can you? I can, I'll, I'll show you on the way okay, home. Right, I'll, cool. I'll show. I'll try yeah. to get up that hill. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually we just put pedals. We didn't say about driving, but driving, you've got to have enough space between. Yeah. I, I want to fit that shoe between the brake 
and whatever the outside but of what the if you're car. wearing a lizard like driving that that's very yeah. good when we were in uh, america the other day I, most of the cars we were in i couldn't use the stupid shoes i was wearing well, why but I know did we turned up to a track day where we, there we, were McLaren f1s in a brogue <laughs> I wasn't in a fucking yeah. It was. It was just a trainer, but it was sort of large. Fuck on an intergalactic scale. The 1950s about. Sorry. Yeezys. On. I had right. Yeezys on yeah. or something like oh, that. Right. <laughs> no, but well, I, put, I put design. I thought we were talking about pedal design, but uh, that's oh, obviously not the case. The but I, I, I did do a little bit of research. Carrera GT, pedal box, beautiful set of pedals. Yeah, Apologies nice. for all Carrera GT owners who can't drive them for the next 18 months. Um, but That's good. T50, the Gordon Murray T50. Piece, piece yeah, of art. Gordon piece of art. Do, pedals, do you yeah. prefer those to the McLaren F1 pedals? I think I do. Do you? Mm. I think they're beautiful. I always remember those stories that when Car Magazine, when they launched the F1, oh, and, they'd, yeah. and they'd have Gordon talking about the pedal oh. box, and it was worth more than a car. It probably was. Probably yeah. Damn cool, though. I don't want to yeah. sorry, carry on. So yeah. you're saying T50 or... I, des- I like a pedal box. So precision... Delicate. Need, needs to be delicate for me. Jesus Christ. Yes. Okay, Neil Clifford, And I will show you the Neil Clifford, take, us, the take us away from the worrying <laughs> pornography of Edward Lovett's mind. My favourite pedals are yeah. a 911 2.7 RS. Ooh. So you like a floor hitch? Even though they're super they're quirky. They're not everyone's favourite. I don't let the man, Let the man <laughs> let him finish. Even though they are from a Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're up, aren't you? But the most important thing for me is the noise that that accelerator makes. It's got like a mechanical, beautiful clicking noise when you when you rev the when you rev the engine, or even obviously you're changing gear, you're driving along. It's got this. It's good these things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's got this fabulous movement and noise that you're just like, oh, that's just fantastic. This car is a proper motorsport car that it came up from the 2.4 S and that whole thing. Car doesn't look much, much different, frankly, apart from, you know, the little ducktail on the back, but everything, when you're driving it, it feels so, so special, that car. That is the, I don't mind if I die car is the one, <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna- a Strong gonna, pedal. Yeah, I'm gonna, statement. if I'm gonna kill myself, yeah. that's the car. <laughs> that's that the I'd pedal you take. want to do it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How did we get there? Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I say that positively. <laughs> yeah, we, we, can, okay. we can move us away from that so, dark area. I, think, I mean, the F1 pedal, I mean, we all seen the photographs, you think yeah, that's what you think pedals should look like. But pedals can bollocks a car, can't they? Yeah. We had, you know, we, we had the conversation about Defenders and Land Rover series. Series 2 Land Rover, at least the one that I had a few years ago. Oh, that, that, that far off the ground. Oh, and you got to sort of push down. It's a completely <laughs> unnatural. Yeah. Oh, it just, no, t- take it away. It's just, yeah. no, it doesn't work at all. Um, Cameron and I, my son Cameron's here, some of you may have seen TV. So we had a conversation, and JCB Telehander, JCB Telehander's got <laughs> fucking amazing pedals. It does, you can do all the telehandling you'd ever want to do. What's that? What's a telehander? Have you done manual work? Have you seen? Have you seen? You've seen these hands. That's so, true, yeah. so what is it? Is it? Is it it's it's a like little digger. It's a. Li- it's not. It's like. It's like a, you know. You know the things that you see at Formula One. Is it a, when you're at a racetrack? Is it a big digger you out, or is it a little digger? When they're picking you out of the gravel trap at a racetrack. Oh, that's again, low. That is. That's again. low. That thing that comes out, and you think, I've seen those things it's a one lot. Of those. So what I call a Manitou. A what I call a Manitou. A Manitou. It's a French brand. Yeah. Other brands are available. Okay. JCB, yellow. Why Manitou are those pedals red. great? Are they just perfectly ergonomically they located? Are. And they feel, they've got feel. How many are there? Uh, th- how many have they got? Two. two. It's just oh, two, isn't it? I thought you were going to say six. Oh. They two, two but they do six. lots of so things. You're an, so you're an automatic lover? Um, it does, yeah, basically. Yeah. So... so F1 McLaren, JCB Telehandler. That covers everything. <laughs> Rice to life. So I, I'm I'm split here. I I, I think there's a there's a di- there's definitely a, a difference between pedal design and what they're actually like to use. So I love people that I love designers that go to town on a pedal box and care about that. But I suppose the way they actually work. Crow GT for me is a, is a great example. I, I love the way they look, but I find it quite a difficult mm. car to drive smoothly. That's partly because the engine and the clutch, but also the way that sort of those thin fillets of pedal again I mean their floor hinge are a bit tricky to drive also they're quite slippery pedals aren't they because they're metal they are. um, and I learned that the, the hard way with racing cars because nice looking pedals were not supposed to be messed with 
So I remember being in a racing car thinking you can't touch the pedals. That's just that would be sacrilege. You, and someone just put some, somebody just put some grip tape, sandpaper, like, like sandpaper yeah. on yeah. the pedals, transform them overnight. Absolutely transform Suddenly it. these things yeah. are just brilliant. Well, yeah. that, why don't road cars have yeah. sandpaper on them? It'd be brilliant. <laughs> Yeah. Um, or a little plate down the side. Would so you like? To, would, would you like to hear my pedal box story from my I, testing? I've years? waited forever for right, this story. This is, a, this is a cracker. It involves an Alpha One Four Seven. Right. So do you remember the Alpha One Four Seven? Sadly. Yes. Right. So that was the that was their sort of mid range ship box they made in the late nineties, that really wasn't very very good. And we all got invited out to the launch event uh, in northern Italy, and then we went to the Bellocco test track. So it's not all bad. Oh, but it was, you know, it was a tough job. And, but it was to demonstrate the dynamic qualities of this new Alfa Romeo, which ultimately was another Limited. shit fear underneath. Anyhow, I remember getting in the car and thinking, this really is, this is terrible. This is not a good car at all. And we drove off down the road, did three subs, got back to the test track. And because it had so little power, you, you know, you're basically on the bulkhead the whole time. And something in my head said, this throttle pedal doesn't feel right. So halfway down the back straight, I realize I'm losing speed quite quickly. And I look into the footwell, and there's a lovely piece of plastic down by my foot. And the throttle pedal had sheared at the top of the pedal box and was just in the, in the car. So I, so I, and the car ground to a halt. I couldn't drive any faster. What I had was idle in fifth gear, which was for like 30 miles an hour. Came in, pulled over, dipped the clutch. The track director comes over and goes full Italian mental at me because I'm causing a, dis a, dis yeah. a, you know, a disruption on the track. And I pull up the throttle pedal and I say, the throttle pedal fell off. To which he went, even, he went even more mental at me and told me <laughs> that I'd broken the throttle pedal deliberately <laughs> yeah. so I could give the car a bad review. Um, and then the PR man told me that I'd been behaving like, I quote, a fucking child. <laughs> so and he, that had, was that. he had some skills then. So guy. this, but genuinely, the throttle pedal just broke on the car. Uh, I'm I'm with Neil on the 911 pedal box. The one thing I did was there's a little joy in in some of the Porsche stuff. I had a 3.2 Club Sport oh, that was nice. 911. That was a special car, yeah, and yeah. I wish I'd never sold it. Basically, gave it to Gordon Brown, um, and um, <laughs> it did. It was exactly the same as a stamp duty on the first house I bought. That wanker. Uh, and um, I'm apolitical, but I don't yeah. care which party he's from. He took my car from me. Um, and I remember, not not all Porsche pedal boxes are quite right. So you, the the I don't know if, whoever's got a floor hinge pedal box in a 911 now. If you drive it at row speeds when the brakes are cold, um, the pedal's too high relative too to the high, throttle. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. So the the throttle's down there. So you end up sort of being like a ballet dancer trying to get your ankle around. And you can't. And you want to pretend to your mates that you can heel and toe, but you can't. So basically, they're, the getting, they're sort of headbutting the windscreen and you're going, yeah, I'm really good at this heel and towing thing. And actually, they're thinking, I wish you'd just drive it like a minicab driver because it's not impressive. Anyhow, I thought to myself, this isn't quite right. But of course, when you got the car on a track, the, the pedal would sink a bit and then you could roll nicely onto the throttle. But you can't always drive at racing speeds on the road. I would love it. And... Um, <laughs> But I remember going to Tuttle's, right? And I thought to myself, this is, I need to get the, I need to get all this adjusted. And he said, ah, watch this. He goes, a series production 911 in the late, in the mid to late eighties had a fully adjustable racing pedal box on it. So you pull that lovely thick carpet back. Yeah. That is, that's a fully adjustable pedal box behind there on a series car. And he went, watch this, just did three or four nuts, took the pedal I back, fully on a road car. So you can have race car mode at Granny on the road. Yeah. So if you own that's a G Series clever. Carrera, pull the I'm flat back, pull the flat back, and have a good look round. It. It's absolutely lovely. <laughs> so I think that's a great pedal yeah, box. Clever people. Aren't they? Um, I ca I can't really think of many better than have that. Have you driven I, one I with a central throttle? Yes, I'm not very good at that. No. Have you driven I, those I, old I, cars? I haven't driven one of those. Yeah, I nearly no, went through the not, windscreen on one of those. Have you not got something with a central throttle? You not got. You not. You must have. No. You must have. We could. Not that I can remember. Could we convert one for you? Could we? We can make yeah, a little yeah, project. So I'll let, I'll, I'll, I'm now being indiscreet. So uh, again, testing days. So we used to leave Millbrook behaving like children. And then someone in our team would call, it's cross-legged. So you'd have to drive back from <laughs> Millbrook to London cross-legged. <laughs> and it's possible. It's risky, but we did manage it. So I learned to do that. I could cross-leg all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> all the way back, but I won't, uh, naming no names, Colin Goodwin. He worked. <laughs> he worked. He worked out that the clutch. He just quit, his, his right foot would get a bit lazy on the clutch, so he'd just key off in first, just start it in first <laughs> in traffic. And everyone thought he was pissed. So you just see this car doing this. <laughs> so you could, cr yeah, the, that was irresponsible. We'll cut that bit out. But we, you could cross leg it all the way back. The p but pedals and driving positions are also really important because it, this is another. It's a bit like the convertible argument. Because on the one hand, 
if they're really bad pedals and the, and the driving position is a bit offset, it can be really annoying. It but there's a, it, but yeah. there's a point at which that becomes characterful, you know? Oh, dear, we've got the some late comments. Arrived. Right, we're going we're gonna to start again. Don't, we're going to start again. Don't worry. <laughs> um, and so you can, you, can, you, can cross, you, can, you can basically get to the point where it's so offset. Like, I reckon, if anyone's driven one, a 512 TR, still, I just love the one I had. I wish I'd never sold it. Um, that driving position is it's absurd. I mean, you're, 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 like, you're basically like that. Yeah. You know, you to, to avoid that front yeah. wheel arch, your legs are pretty much on the passenger. The wheel's over here. I, I mean, quite the, like how you're standing there. The, the, yeah, I mean, look how short not, my legs I, are. The, 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 the Giuseppe that designed it wasn't a normal human being. Was it, was it what do you love about the car, though? The fact that well, it is I like, like that. I like the fact that actually the pedals are a real headache, and you, and you have to get good at driving it. There's a lot to be said about cars that aren't easy to drive, and you have to learn to drive them. That's part of the appeal of some of your old Crocs, isn't it? It must be. Probably. Yeah, yeah de the Defender Compact. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That Defender conversation we had, you can't, you absolutely can't heal and tone a Defender. And you kind of think, actually, why was I trying to heal and tone a Defender? What's that all about? Why are you doing that? Well, exactly, and you can't, and you can't. But we had this conversation last week about poor old Nick DeVries and the fact that he lost his drive and his confidence had gone. The don't one bring, thing, bring that up. One of the big things you need to get a time out of a car is confidence in the pedals. When you, you know, you hit the pedal, and you know in all cars, you've got to heal and tone. You've got to know, if I take that braking point, I've got to roll off the pedal, it's got to work. Otherwise, you're braking back there somewhere. I'd love Pedals to learn that one day. That's on my, Here, my, okay. oh, this my is, bucket list. You might not heel see the video. Towing. Put your hands up if you regularly heel and toe in a car on the road. Lies. See, I still, I still, I still. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good. That's, that's really good. I reckon. I reckon one third of the people yeah. here do. It's yeah. one of those things that I, I, I do love it when people pretend they can heel and toe. You don't need to. You just just put the. Put I the don't even know which way round it is. Oh, well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> no, but I do. I drive along sometimes. Maybe we practice that one time. Like, grab it on, and I'm like, is it that? <laughs> <laughs> Toe and heel. <laughs> Do I blip the brake when I? Do you know what? It was, it, tough in those. it was originally toe and heel. <laughs> it was, yeah. It was originally toe. Well, for actually, the, for the it's sort of heel, this, isn't it? That's it should how be. I do it, I think. Yeah. If you leave your toe so on the brake, that's how you do it. You think, heel, isn't it? Really. <laughs> but that, but toe, it. It, it was originally toe and heel. I'm yeah. too busy in my convertible looking at the sky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, love you for that. Yeah. 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 No, I, 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 that auto blip thing that that did me that did because that really was that's like AI for the rest of the world now. I spent. 15 years learning how to do that bastard heel and toe thing. Yeah. Like and then that. someone just gives you a button and everyone's better at it than me. It's just not fair. Yeah. Yeah, it's good I though, like isn't that. it? What do you mean it's good? I have to say You'll I have to get over it. Well, I will get over it. Yeah. Right, yeah. we're moving yeah. on. Here we go. Now, this next one. Single motoring story that you'd keep on a desert island. Neil Clifford. This isn't a story that we have done. This can be any story. This is, right? Anything that's been written down or told or, yeah. you know, whatever. Okay. Well, there's there's a book. Actually, Chris has nicked it off me. Um, called, You're not having it back either. Yeah, I've got two actually. Oh, two books. But um, I he's still always covered, isn't he? Uh, Ten days in Sicily. Oh. And it's the most anyone here seen that book? Put your hands up if you have. Oh, you're in for a treat. Google it. It is sensational. And it's a story of um, three guys that go from London and they fly to um, Turin. One of them's connected with the with the automotive industry, so they get a press car. I think it's a one two eight saloon Fiat from Turin. What year are we? Sixty six. Yeah, nineteen sixty six, and they drive the length of Italy, which you know, whatever, it's a thousand kilometers probably or eight hundred yeah, kilometers. More than that. Three or four days in this in this Fiat, and then they get to Sicily, and Sicily, and I think it's in May, and there's the um, Formula One down in, uh, I remember the name of the bloody place in a minute, down in the, at the bottom right, and then there's the Targa Florio. And in those days, as we know, as we, 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 we know what used to happen is, drivers used to do everything. So you'd turn up and there was Surtees and there was all the guys doing the F1. And then three days later, they're in a 512S or whatever, and they're screaming around doing the Targa Florio. And these guys, uh, amateur photographers, beautiful uh, Kodachrome, photography of, of this whole 10 days and it's just the most idyllic beautiful thing you've ever ever seen and that would I'm dyslexic so I can't read anyway that book would be enough for me 
to be on a on a desert island. It's absolutely it's, it's gorgeous. Isn't it's it? a gorgeous. It's also, gorgeous. And, and I, you know, without wanting to be um, uh, unkind, it, it's it, the words are beautiful as well. They really are. It's a it's a Can great you come story. And read it to me? Oh, mate, bedtime story. Be yeah, lovely. I'll oh, do that lovely. for you. I feel like Jack and Ori. <laughs> yeah. Me and Florella Benjamin will come there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll both wear like a bikini. We'll sit there a and read dumpty. to you. Yeah, yeah. We'll get zippy in as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it is, you're right, it's stunning. And I, I, Neil lent me a copy of it and it's going to take a while for it to come back. It's Because it's a great one when you're on your own and you you had a glass of wine you just sit down and the colours... Yeah, it's you, the Kodachrome film. You just want to be there, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And no one knows about it. Why does no one know about it? Because the book is bloody expensive, man. <laughs> no, but you can't buy it. Can't it's you? a problem. No, because they, they won't reprint it. I don't know why. Um, Can we try and find a way of reprinting it? I'm, I'm sure. Can we speak to the family done... and we do a, do a full charity donation? Yeah. No. I mean, it, it, it is the most gorgeous book. Even we can maybe put some pictures on something. Yeah. yeah of the yeah. book. Okay. I, I think, think we, we should, I think we should start a campaign to get it printed. Because no, should, everyone. We should take it because of the internet. Everyone knows about everything. But I was amazed yeah. when I asked a few of my friends whether they'd heard about this book. I no had ever heard of it. I have. Yeah. That would be enough for me on a desert island. But it sounds wonderful. Uh, Chris Cooper. So um, I thought about this quite a bit, and I thought, well, because I thought desert island meant desert island. I mean, you know, Robinson Crusoe, Castaway. That's it. You're stuck. Um, you might never see anyone ever again. You might that this might be it. You know, sort yeah. of. That's all. That's that exactly desert, what I meant. Desert Island <laughs> is so right, and, Desert uh, Island <laughs> uh, with no um, with no record player. Um, so you kind of want to be reminded because you think this could be it. You want to be reminded of happy times and a happy place and sort of something that had really made a difference to you. And there was. And I, I tried to find something that you'd written, and I couldn't find anything you'd written. Yeah. That made that sense to me, so. <laughs> Um, but I did find something. It was written by somebody we all know, Andrew Frankel. Yeah. Uh, he's a super bloke. And a year or so ago, uh, on another media outlet, uh, the, the Intercooler, he wrote an extraordinary article about his very first motor race and how he felt and the emotions and how he reacted to his very first motor race. And it was... I was going to read some of it, but I think, you know, you, if you see the interview, you'll find it. It's about a year ago, Andrew Frankel. And his honesty about the sense of horror and nervousness and panic that you, I can't do this. Every, he said, every other driver looked fitter and stronger and faster and more handsome and more sexually <laughs> successful than me and blah. No, not you, Jesus. And, and you think, you know, and he said there was a point where, oh, actually, my lid, the, the licensing on my lid had expired. And he said the sense of relief. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to go out. And those of you who race will know that, that that is true. I mean, there are times when we've been racing and the car's broken and you think, oh, no, the car. Thank fuck for that. You don't have to go out and that car. Um, but then you sort of... so. It was just a one, and it's got a happy ending because he drove and he raced and he enjoyed it and so forth. And I could write, I could read that forever. That memory and that reminder of something that, you know, you don't have to drive in the circuit to have that feeling. It's just that, that thing we all share. It was wonderful. I loved it. Well, I'm glad we mentioned that because he's an old pal of mine. He's one of the very best motor bikes of all. And, and uh, always remember, when I, for, when I, yeah, when I worked at Auto CAC at the beginning, um, Auto CAC, I love the place really. Um, and uh, he was, uh, uh, Andrew had just, he was in between stints at Motorsport, uh, editing Motorsport he magazine. He was doing everything, wasn't he? Right, it? he was doing loads. But he was given, he had three weeks off, or he had three weeks on his contract where he had to come to Autocar, and his job was to, was to teach me how to write, something Dear he singularly God. failed at. But I remember the first thing I wrote, this is our worlds colliding, first thing I'd written was a, a road test on a BMW Z8 under him, right? Wow. So I'd already been there a year and a half. Start high. And the car was loaned to us by the Lovett family. So it's got this... So we've, 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 we've not thrashed this Z8. At all. Thrashed the shit off it. <laughs> Haven't been told to thrash it. I wrote these words. And in those days, they, they'd, you'd write the words, they'd put it in rough into the Quark Express file, and he'd print it off and give it to you in A4. And then he would red pen it. The first one he... The first draft, you couldn't see my words. <laughs> it was just red pen. <laughs> And, and I, the first the first sentence he underlined and he just put Y in the question mark and the, the column I thought oh my god 
I'm done here. No, he's he's an amazing motion writer. And I was one of my favourite piece of his was doing a 24 hour race in a I think it was a Chrysler Voyager. And he's he's describing this engineer, this engineer that couldn't really work out why he was there, and he coined the phrase something in the German's face didn't compute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really that really um Edward. Motoring writing, something well, that's not you close know, to your heart. Because you've been taking the piss out of me. I've, I've been struggling with this one. And I wrote down here, because I said to you a, a few weeks ago that I don't... By the way, Edward, by the way Edward's notes... Uh, Edward's notes... Um, he, are uh, wet, because you dropped them They're wet, because I shot them out of his car, and he can't yeah. read what he's And I actually down. put here, I'm still writing my own story. So, uh, not literally, but we, yeah. we're writing our story. Yes. But it just, I did just occur to me this afternoon, and Ben got a flavour of Chris, unfortunately... 20 minutes from Ben's on your marketing director in the back of uh, in the back of my car but I've been very fortunate with Chris to travel with him over the last uh, three or four years around the world and the t- <laughs> I'm not sure I need this written down but the memories that exist in my mind of the time we're just getting to and from venues when no one else gets to see how Chris is with me is hilarious and it will bring an inner warmth to me for the rest of my oh, life and I say I don't that, that's I'm not too cry. sucky because you can see he's a complete bully uh, as well but, oh, uh, but, I, but I but I but I but I love you for it and, uh, that, yeah. that will put a massive smile on my face if I happen to be on a desert island. That's a lovely touch. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm, my, sorry my my pleasure. Pleasure. I'm sorry if you think no. I'm well, no, I don't I think I'm a wanker. I don't mean, I mean to me. It, it's just come so naturally <laughs> yeah. to me. Yeah. Right, just, just so um, I've just been given the 10 minute warning so we've got to get the two car garage out. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm gonna. I'm, this is my subject, and it's obviously I love asking questions that I want to answer. That's what we all do, isn't it? Um, motoring writing is a passion of mine. Uh, I I've studied it forever. The people that I read as a kid still lurk in my mind. I think that many of you here would have come up having read journalism rather than watched videos. I'm mm. still a, I'm a bigger fan of the written word and the still image than I am a world of videos. I you know I don't mind making videos, but I far rather read great journalism. And for me, it's Russell Bulgin's interview mm. of Nigel Mansell. Some of you will be familiar oh, with it. Yes, it is. If you go and it's on Car Magazine, have got it up on Google. Just Google Nigel Mansell's interview, and I want to yeah. just I want to tell you how it ends because it's just so joyous. So Russell Bulgin, arguably the greatest um, motion writer ever, um, describes Nigel Mansell like this to start with. He says. He doesn't feel too good. he doesn't feel too good, Nigel. A cold or flu, he says. He looks terrific though, handsome in a clean cut way and massively powerful in the upper body. You know this because as you begin to talk, Nigel Mansell takes his clothes off in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> brackets fact: Nigel Mansell wears multicolored Y fronts under his race suit. Close brackets. <laughs> His chat is punctuated by the fizz of Velcroed boots being peeled off. Oh, Mansell ends up wearing a pair of black jeans, a geometrically patterned grey sweater, training shoes, a long, blo- a long dark blue boss overcoat, and his flat cap. Yeah, <laughs> so he's painted everything there that you couldn't even see in a video image. It's just joyous. Anyhow, it ends. The interview ends. Famously, those that you know it. So he asks the question, is it true that Frank Williams thinks you're a pain in the ass?" Nigel's already having a bad day and it's going down here and he ends it like this. This is how it ends. It was a deliberately provocative question, Nigel. I know what I'm going to I know what I'm saying to you and the tape recorder clicks off. Then Mansell gets up and leaves the truck. Crumpler and Sheridan Fine stand around Williams people looking ill at ease. Then Nigel bounds back in and continues. Abruptly he gets up. He looks a, he looks a trifle flushed. He turns and shakes his he shakes your hand. His palm is dry, the grip gentle. Thank you, he says, and fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh nice. Now, that was the end of the interview with Nigel Mansell. So I was, I was trying to read it and I wasn't getting out, kidney. But for me, I, I could sit and read that interview every morning. Yeah. I read it every I can, day. I can hear it in my mind now. Oh god, it's an amazing it. book, Bulging. If yeah. you can get if Russell Bowden's book, on eBay, yeah, they, they only printed a few, but his writing was just, you know, he, yeah. he, he decided that the Velcro was invented inside um, Emerson Fittibaldi's helmet, didn't he? Yeah. He, he, he tells yeah. this story about how <laughs> Emmo's beard against his Nomex yeah. lining was the invention of Velcro. <laughs> right, the two-car garage. Okay. Oh, look this up. Right, you got this? Here yeah. we go. Yep. An unnamed television presenter... <clears throat> is currently enjoying an involuntary sabbatical from his work on a car show. <laughs> this means he is terrified of car finance, so his M5 CS and Polestar 1 will soon appear 
on the UK's best car auction platform. <laughs> That's not a lie. <laughs> In their place, he wants to own two cars for cash. Old school. One must have 400 horsepower, at least 400 horsepower and four doors. The other must be front wheel drive, fun to drive and street parkable. The combined budget is 60,000 of your earth pounds. Neil Clifford, help me out here. Right. It's only an M5 E39. Right? Okay. Really? Yep. 400 horsepower just, I think. Yep. You'd find a good spec, that light blue with caramel. There was one that on Clepton Cars. That Silverstone guy blue. got it for oh, 24 so nice grand, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, down in Kent, that guy lives. I think we should go and nick it. Off <laughs> <that guy>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 635i on Instagram or whatever. He bought a car. Fantastic blue caramel heritage leather. That's the car, really. I don't think you can get a better four-door car than that within this budget, or maybe in any budget. And then you've got, what have you got? You've got a lot of money left, actually. And I was not struggling with this, but I was thinking, what would I go and buy that I owned, that I regret selling, that's front-wheel drive, park it on the street, and it's got incredible damping, and you could drive Word it. Word of the day. Oh, he's really changed. He's got, I have. You got your, your pedals around the wrong way around. <laughs> the seat's a bit high. It's the only bad thing about this car. But I have a Renault Sport Trophy. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that yeah. for fifteen grand, maybe the best, 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 best one is now twenty grand. But that's an amazing little car with the very posh suspension, which I can never remember the name of it. Sax. Um, Sax. No, Sax. The really expensive shit. I can't remember. The one with the separate reservoir on the rear. That's all that. Yeah, and it's, yeah. if it goes wrong, it's like four grand. Yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's got Recaros. It's it's modern enough. You got AC. It doesn't break. So those things don't really break, do they? they? The door handles go pink. About the only thing that goes wrong with it goes those. pink. Pink. How yeah. do you know that? Pink. If you see them left on the street, yeah. You know those cars that even Guards Red goes pink sometimes. But you've upset the good Lord here with yeah. your trophy <laughs> chat. It's got biblical. The tent's going to take off. Yeah. <laughs> so, so E39 M5 with a decent spec, not bloody black with black or that sort of two tone leather that's a bit shady. Yeah, that's horrible. Not the wood, even though that's so. Well, hold on, hold on. What about a black one with the wood and the heritage leather in the caramel? It, yes, okay. I'll give yeah, you, that. you can do that. It doesn't exist. So I've never seen that car. Have you not? No. Oh. Let's find it. Okay. No. So yeah. that's what I would have. And I think you'd have. A massive amount of joy with those two cars. Yeah. I think he's half right. Okay, you you do the other half then. So, I, I think I know this person, <laughs> <laughs> and I I kind of feel like I've known him most of my adult life, and he's getting on a bit. He's getting on a bit. <laughs> Fucking hell! And I don't I don't know that an M5 an E39 because I had I had E39 M5. I did start with that. Uh, and that is almost, if the 911 is the answer to every question, the second answer to the question is an E39 M5. Um, I found, I found, or rather my research, crack research team found, a Bentley Arnage 6.8R. Oh. Oh. At this point, I usually hold it up to camera, but no, the face lift. Trying, to, trying, the face to, lift, right? trying to ruin your friends was last week, mate. Uh, 40 grand, 2006. Yeah, 40 Arnage grand. T. Arnage R. But facelift with a better front. Better front, yeah. But better front. And one of those with either a Trophy or a Megan, a Megan Sport. Thing. R26. So R26, yeah. Titanium suit yeah. and the titanium exhaust. Yeah, with the, yeah. With the floppy the gray plastic, one. The plastic the gray. rear winger. Yeah, the grey yeah. one. No yeah. stickers. No stickers. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Um, I've got you because it's for you, yeah. clearly. So I've got you a modern car. No, it's an unnamed, a modern it's an unnamed garage and a, television and a classic, presenter uh, who sorry. might not have a job yeah. now, probably forever. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so your modern garage is yeah. going to consist of a Holden Commodore. Oh, oh Jesus yeah. Christ! Right, one strong. of the special edition versions. Yeah, yeah. An HSV GT. Yeah, ah, something ah, like that. Yeah. Ah, ah, and a Mini ah. GP Works. Mini GP Works. Yeah. That's not oh. bad. It's blowing a hoolie here. I'm not yeah. sure the good anyway, ones. that's your modern version. Yeah. And your. Anna, is it an HSV? It's going to be an HSV, isn't it? I don't know. There were so many different versions on uh, carsales.com.au. No, no, no. uh, and the other one is a, the, your classic garage is a Holden Tonaro SLR <laughs> with an Alfa Romeo Alfa Sud. Oh, a Sud. A Sud. Yeah, that's nice. That's so I'm, I'm going to leave an Alfa Sud on the road. Yes. It would just be a, just a pile of rust after a week, <laughs> wouldn't it? That's what you've got. 
Right. Now, this is you really You are weird. now actually going to tell us what you are this, going to buy. No, this is, well, maybe I am. Can we have a go in the M5 CS before you sell it? Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, thank you. It is the best. Honestly, if you get a chance to drive one of those, that is the best car I've ever owned. Sadly, the finance payments are hideous, so it's going. Up. Also, you're, you're very welcome to borrow your mate's cars when I you am need. Very, that's very, very kind. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, and you, and you yeah. can borrow one of my Citroen AXs whenever you want. <laughs> oh, thank I you. love it. I've got seven. Love so so I've, uh, I've answered this. Actually, I, I think you've missed an obvious one here. Um, I th the car I'm looking at and I want to buy is a uh, Alpha uh, Julia Quadrifoglio because I yeah. just yeah. I know they're a bit of a nightmare, but I, oh, I've got this theory yeah. that yeah, shit that. stuff that's a bit shit. That Jaguar's got his boot up in this weather. That's dangerous. Yeah, someone's so, in it. <laughs> uh, so uh, I just think that all the electrical gremlins have probably been fixed on them. They've mm. been back to the dealer nine times. They've worked it Good out. Part. I think every time I see one go past me on the road, I'm jealous of the person driving it. It's beautiful. It's Italian. It's perfectly fast enough for me. The first time I drove one on a Top Gear shoot, I ripped the sump off it in the first five miles. Standard. Uh, and it had to go back. And then we went straight down to Dunsfold to film it. And on the first corner, I drove it straight into the tracking car and rode that one off as well. <laughs> so I haven't got a good history and I want to continue in a better, a better frame of mind. And so I love them and I want that dark blue color. Yeah. So I'm looking to buy one of those and I, I really will, if it goes all wrong, I have to borrow someone else's car. And the hatchback is, I still think, because I can get one of those late 30s, uh, mid to late 30s, there's a Cat N that's at 32 grand. Did you ever look at Cat Ns and think, what's wrong with it? No, it's, you, you know, don't as a cat, we know. Don't do Cat anymore. What's the N category now? Don't Is know. that really bad? Not, like a cat's been sick in it or something. It's it nothing serious. <laughs> yeah. So uh, maybe I'll go down 32 grand and get a real wrong end. <laughs> no. uh, and I like the cut, well, what was just finished, the last Megane. You're right with the Renault, yeah. but the last Megane Sport, um, which I think they call Sport 280 or Sport 300. Yeah. That is an amazing okay. car with a diff. Yeah. They're yeah. really yeah. fast. Leave it out on the street. Uh, and is that I, the one without no, no rear seats? No, no, no. It's got rear seats. It's yeah, a normal car. Okay. It's got it's got a manual gearbox. It's got some Recaros. It's got a brilliant French infotainment system. The, when you see it, it yeah. promises so much. And and you know, when you actually <laughs> look yeah. at it, you go, yeah. "This actually, why did they bother? This never worked. Yeah. It's just <laughs> this is no one even looked at this." Yeah. Um, but it's French, and I can leave it out on the street. So I think those those would be my two cars. How much are they? The Renault. About 22, 23 mm. gets you a good one. Uh, but you could go for a really fancy one, a bit more money. But uh, frankly... A bit of change in that. Yeah, yeah. A, ch a chunk of change. Right, yeah. now, we, this is the bit that's controversial because we always like to offer a song. But many people think we're too middle-aged to offer music because we're too boring. So that's why we carry on doing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Neil Clifford, tell us. Are you still on the 90s or you moved no, on? No, no, I moved current. Are you? Yeah. Like it. I moved current just because my, my daughter has introduced me to the 1975. Oh! Oh, and they're brilliant. And, and um, there's a song called I Always Wanna Die. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna play this in your 27RS or what? Yeah. No, but then there's the brackets, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so much better. But honestly, please, it'd be like, oh God, we're not gonna listen to it. Listen to it. It's beautiful, modern, thoughtful pop. It's really okay. cool. I really like that. Cool. Beautiful yeah. modern. Why didn't you write for the NME when you were younger? You loved have. it, mate. I can't really. Um, write. Edward, you, I can are you talk interested well, in I'm not he's, he's, no, I'm this? Not uh, he always so does this. He's not thought he's now he's gonna go into his what's the last thing he played on Spotify? Carry on. Go, Ma go, Madonna, go. True Blue. Can you, well, actually, can, no, 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 what, what, can you pronounce those? L'amour et la violence. Et la violence. Are you doing the Manish music? I don't no, know. No. Sebastian we'll do, Tellier. We'll do that in a minute. Okay. That's you what go, I'll you put on the playlist. Um, I just found a bit of Frankie Goes to Hollywood still going around my oh, head. Good. You're going to play that in your six series convertible because no, it might no, not work no, out. No, you know? no, no, no. Um, I just, two tribes. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, it's a great tune. Just it's a great the tune. long version. Yeah, when I go version. to the gym, as you yeah. can tell, uh, I play the long version. So you can play that on the way yeah. to the gym. Yeah. You can watch Broke that, Back Mountain when you get home. It was like we all thought we were going to die, we didn't did. we? We did. Yeah. Because yeah, every night on yeah. the telly, there was like, if yeah. there's a nuclear bomb. 83, 83, was Two Tribes the a spitting image video? Was that? Uh, two it wasn't two spitting image. It was uh, it was caricatured. Was it? It was Reagan yeah. and who would have been Brezhnev. there? Funny faces. Uh, not Brezhnev. It would have been Andrew Fogg. One with the one. birthmark on his head. Gorbachev. 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 Just Gorbachev. Just pre Gorbachev. It might have been or Gorbachev. Or a spitting image called Mikhail, I've got a period <laughs> yeah, yeah. on my head, Gorbachev. Yeah. <laughs> how, was that, how was that ever acceptable? How was I'm that not acceptable? sure it is acceptable. No, sorry. I, 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 I'm just quoting spitting image yeah. there. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> Um, so uh, I'm going to go for 
ZZ Top because I'm, oh, cause I'm oh, and that. it's going to be I'm bad I'm nationwide. <laughs> well, you listen to that in the car. That is a cracking tune. Um, you'll notice that the, there's one of us absent. Uh, Manish, bless him, who we love dearly and is an integral part of this, and we thank him for his contribution. Has had a really tricky couple of days and is so sad not to be here. He sent a big hug because he's a big huggy person. We want to reciprocate that because we we do adore Manish and he's really sad not to be here. We've not fallen out with the band is all together, but he, for personal reasons, he couldn't be here. But I didn't want to start the show with that because it seems like a rather negative way to start. I don't want to end the show like that because it's a negative way to end. So um, I, I can't think of a more positive way to end than to say thank you so much to our host thank you. for yes. lending us this beautiful Wonderful. field, uh, for letting us sit yeah. in this lovely tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, please make sure that you've had a drink. Please make sure you've got a bag of swag. We got please, some swag, yeah. Please Make continue sure to up. be addicts in all the right ways. Uh, we want to thank you for supporting this podcast because it really came about not for commercial reasons, but because there were five people that had too much to say and too few people that would ever listen to it. <laughs> uh, and I want to say thank you to my co-hosts, Chris Cooper, Edward Lovett, Neil Clifford, and also to the absent managed Pandy, who will be back next week. Thank you for coming. Good stuff. Yeah.